Good morning, buddy. Good morning, Patrick. You mentioned uh, last night's post-game uh, presser uh, that, you know, tomorrow's another day. You look forward to seeing how Chi-Chi does, et cetera. So I have a question about Chi-Chi. Okay. My opinion, on the most part, he's been pretty solid. But it seems like the third time through the order, teams have started to reach him. Is that part of what's going on, or am I not seeing that correctly? No, I think that's – I think, uh, you know, you're seeing it the right way. You know, in each particular game, it's it's different. But, uh, you know, that should be the case with a lot of starting pitchers. Or should I say with a lot of hitters? You know, we talk about that in the, you know, in our dugout, you know, facing a guy for the third time uh, or even the second time. You know, we talk about, hey, now we know what he's got. We know his release point. We know his, uh, we know his arm slot. Uh, we've seen a number of his pitches. So that's, you know, that's pretty standard. So uh, I mean, it's standard for a lot of pitchers. And, and Chi-Chi's no different. So what is the next step for Chi-Chi to get beyond five innings, to, uh, to not have the one inning that, you know, costs him a chance to win? Well, making making uh, you know a key pitch at a critical time when uh, when there's base runners, uh, when there's a rally against him, is to you know make some make some pitches to get his outs and not uh, prolong the inning. It's, I mean, it's a pretty simple formula. It's not there's there isn't really uh, any secret. Uh, you know, when you get Stress, no matter whether it's the first inning, the second inning, the fifth or sixth inning, or third time through, you got to make, you got to keep making pitches, and you got to get outs. And I think really, if you if you go, uh, you know, a subset beyond that, it's, uh, you know, the principles: first pitch strikes, don't fall behind the count, uh, be aggressive. I think Chi Chi. I think when when things. Uh, you know, start happening. And this is the case for all pitchers, not just Chi Chi. You have a tendency to be a little defensive. You have a tendency to fall behind the count. You get, you get, uh, you know, in hitters counts and not uh, pitchers counts. So that's something that I've sort of noticed uh, with, uh, with Chi Chi when it gets, you know, a little bit hot. Okay. Um, I know this is a very broad question. Uh, what do you guys need to do to get over these road woes? Uh, you know, there's been a few flashes where the offense comes to life, but for the most part, the offense is just not produced on the road. I mean, is it, do you have an answer or is it just something no, that's going to have to evolve? I know, I know there's a couple of guys who have pretty good road numbers, uh, better than their home numbers. Uh, we, as a group, we need to, we need to, you know, do the things that uh, enable you to win. We got to pitch better on the road too. I mean, there's been games where we haven't pitched well. Uh, it comes down to, you know, you know, a big hit, key pitch. You know, that's how you win games, either uh, road or home. Are you we getting? Gotta, it? We, we got to hit a little better in the clutch. Uh, you know, we got to play, you know, sound baseball. You know, all the things that add up to wins. Are you getting any sense of frustration from the guys? about when they are on, out on the road? On the road, no. Uh, no different. Uh, there's no frustration differences uh, between home and road. OK, thanks, buddy. You're welcome. Mark? Hey, buddy. I, I want to go back to something I asked you about a couple of days ago uh, when, when you were telling me um, how every day you and the, the coaching staff comes in and, and, and tries to make your young players better, help them right. get better. Day by day, and I, I get that entirely. At the same time, when when you're doing that, what's your message to say Charlie or Trevor or or your veteran players that have had team success in the very recent past to keep them from getting maybe frustrated or with the process that you're going through? Right. right now? Well, I, you know, I you know I've told you know a lot of players over the years that uh, you know their their main their main role on the team is to be a player, right? Uh, right. Produce individually, uh, do what you do, be a, be a contributor based on your standing with the team. 
But I've also uh, encouraged uh, Chuck and Trevor and, and Crone and some other the guys with uh, service time and experience, uh, you know, to be uh, to be a supporter, uh, to be a helper of the younger players, because at one time they were a younger player getting helped you know, by the veteran players. So, uh, you know, I think that's part of you know being a team is when you know veteran players you know, help the younger players get better. And I've encouraged those guys to do that. Uh, and I sense that, uh, you know, because of, you know, being a teammate uh, and being experienced as a teammate, even going back to amateur baseball, uh, when you're in high school, when you're in college, uh, you know, guys are, I think at times energized by that. And they, they want to help and they want to, you know, be part of a younger player's uh, path to, you know, to better play. And we have a number of guys on the team, uh, you know, who are lesser service time players, even though they might be a little bit older. Josh Fuentes, for one, is, you know, 28, uh, but yet uh, hasn't experienced the big leagues uh, a ton. And we have younger guys who are lesser service time. And even Brandon Rogers, who is here, uh, he's a young player with not a lot of big league at bats who's being helped by Trevor and Chuck and, and these other guys. But, uh, you know, for them, you know, they know that their main goal is to uh, produce what they do individually. But I've tried to help them part of this process of being uh, support for the rest of the group. And they like that. They don't get uh, frustrated by that. They don't get discouraged. Uh, you know, we are a team and that's something that, you know, this group of players is pretty proud of. Thank you. Do we have anything else for Buddy this morning? Okay, go ahead, Patrick. Yeah, Buddy, some housekeeping stuff. Uh, you had mentioned yesterday that you check in with both Kyle and B-Rod, and I don't know if Yancey's included in this or not, to see how they felt today to determine the next move. Have you made those decisions yet? Uh, we haven't made the final decision, but uh, both guys came out of yesterday's uh, work, you know, healthy and, and confident. They feel great. Uh, you know, there's probably some news coming down probably uh, in the next 24 hours uh, okay. about their upcoming schedule. Uh, you know, probably have to wait a day, uh, Patrick, before we get that out to you guys, but it's, it's coming. And we're encouraged that those guys are progressing and they're getting closer to, you know, actual games against other organizations. And you had mentioned it the other day, and I wasn't quite clear on this. Yancey, is he in a little bit different situation as he comes off the injured list? In other words, does he have to go do rehab? Uh, you know, he might not have to. We just might activate him. Uh, you know, he's not, uh, you know, coming off a – you know, a major situation like Kyle and, and Brendan. And when Yancey returns, and, and I know the, the hand issue um, got in the way a little bit, but he was so good last year. What are the couple, three things that he needs to tweak to become the reliever you expected him to be? Yeah. Well, I, you know, we've talked a little bit about, you know, his mechanics. I know that Daryl, and, and Steve have worked on that these last 10 days with Yancey's input as well. I think with Yancey, you know, he's got a really good slider. Uh, we got to make sure that that's, you know, in play again uh, to the quality that it was last year. And what we've seen these last couple simulated games, it, it looks really good. And, and the fastball command, uh, you've noticed that Yancey's walk rate is a little bit higher this year than last year. We got to get that fastball in the plate. He's got, you know, a two seam fastball with very good movement and he was missing with it a lot this year. So I think there were some bad counts uh, through this year uh, that put him in jeopardy of having a, a you know, a bad result from an at bat. Uh, we got to get him just, you know, more in the strike zone, especially with the fastball and get the, and get the breaking ball back to the quality it was last year. And what we've seen these last 10 days, it's, it's closer. Because you, you, uh, you were very encouraged by his performance last year and we're really excited yes. for this year. Yes. 
And I get the sense from the way you're speaking now that this is not a major issue with the NC. It's more about let's correct a few things and get a little bit of boost of confidence and he'll be back on track. Agree. Agree. I think that, you know, Yancey's spring training numbers were, were pretty solid. He didn't pitch in a, a lot of spring training games. We had him on some inter squad games on the backfield. You know, we had to get a look at some other players, other pitchers through spring. So there's a couple of guys that we knew were going to make the team that uh, who had big league experience that we thought that they could go to the backfields and, and just, you know, concentrate on getting ready for opening day. And, uh, you know, that might have worked a little bit against Yancey. So uh, season starts, <clears throat> his breaking ball wasn't quite, uh, wasn't quite as crisp as it was last year. Uh, his, his fastball was not quite as sharp as it was last year. So now we got to get him to that point. We've had a couple of good conversations about that. So, uh, and I told him, again, and you've heard me say multiple, multiple times that, you know, these fellows are going to pitch you know, anywhere from 55 to 70 games. Uh, we're in that little small window and sample size so far this year. Uh, you know, Yancey feels good. He's healthy. Uh, you know, had a little bit of the hand issue, but I think that's, you know, that's a thing of the past. We, we just got to get his stuff, you know, just a tick better, which we think this layoff helped him and get his slider and his fastball command uh, back to where it was last year. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Okay, guys. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.